Hey there, and welcome to Beardy Dev Adventures. In this video, we're going to go through my previous VR hand synchronization demo to do a breakdown of how it was constructed. But before we go any further, I just want to do a few quick disclaimers about this video. Originally, this was built as a proof of concept, so it may not be too performant, and the code could definitely use improvement. I'm using the frameworks Hurricane VR, Final IK, and Photon Fusion to achieve this demo. I'll provide links below if you would like to go and get these yourself. The last point I'd like to make is I'm assuming you have some prior experience using Unity and Photon Fusion, as this has been built using these tools. So here we are in the Unity project. So first of all, I'll show you the Connection Manager, which is part of the Photon Fusion framework. Here we have the default pilot dummy uh, prefab. So this is what I'm using to spawn in for other player characters. If we open up the pilot dummy, I've got one in the scene. Um, we can see that it's got some Photon Fusion frameworks already set up there. And I've also got a custom dummy network dummy script. If we go over and open up the tracking space for the final IK, we can see I've put network transforms on the left and right hand and the head target as well. So this is so they sync up online. Um, so opening it up, we've got a network object, our network transform. These come with Photon Fusion. And the network dummy script is a custom built script. Here we have the skin meshed renderer. So that's used for the Unity pilot. Um, so I can turn it on and off for the main uh, person in the scene so they don't get two meshes showing at once. I also have this mimic gestures boolean. So the idea behind this was having the ability to turn off gestures if the player character is too far away, but I haven't really used that. We then have the left hand and right hand dummy um, variables, which link up to the left and right hands in the pilot dummy skeleton. So the idea is that the hands are going to be the um, base of it, and then we'll loop through each of the bones in the hands, which are the fingers, and sync up those um, rotations. So if we expand out the left hand and have a look, we'll see that they all have a networked rotation script applied. So this network rotation script, there isn't something in um, Photon Fusion to just track rotation. So it's a custom script I've written just to update the rotation if it has changed in the current scene and send it over the network. And I'll go through that a bit later. Now if we open up part dummy, you can see that I've got left hand and right hand tags. Now these are the only parts I've got that go into the pilot VRIK rig. So when we click on the left arm hand, you can see that the tag is there. And on the right hand as well. And this allows us to reference the hand gestures done by the player while they are playing and send them over the network. Opening up the scripts, we'll go through the network dummy script first. You can see I've got the variables at the top. And these are used to assign the player and the hands. One thing I do want to point out is we get the VRIK component in the children and we find the player game object. By referencing the two VRIK game objects, we allow them to match up. So we're matching the player actions with the dummy actions and the dummy actions will be synced over the network. So we just check um, if the skinned rest renderer doesn't equal null, um, and if it's enabled, set it to false. And this is because we know if the player has state authority. We then go and find the left and right hand tags and get their transforms. In the fixed update network, which is a function from Photon Fusion, we also check for has state authority. Um, if it doesn't, then we return. Um, and then we go through and map all the positions and rotations of the player hands, um, the left uh, hand, right hand, and head target. And then we start copying the transform recursive function. And this function goes through each of the bones within the hand, which we noted before was the parent, and loops through. So we check to make sure that if it's not null, um, that we don't break anything. Then we go through and copy over each of the local rotations of each bone over to the dummy transform. And this runs um, for each of the children as well. So it'll go from the base of their finger up to the tip. 
um, and we're constantly checking to make sure that there's a child count. So if it has a child, then we want to go and copy that transform as well. So the copy transform recursive function will go through and copy each of the bone rotations and keep looping through until it's reached the end and gone through all the bones in the hand. So if we open up the network rotation script, you can see that we extend the network behavior, which is part of the fusion framework. And what we've got at the top is we've networked an on change with the name of rotation change to run that function and that gets passed to rotation. And what this does is then go on and trigger the on rotation changed function. And this is the function that syncs the rotation across the network so they are all match. So we have another function here where we've got spawned. So this is when the bone first instantiates or the script and we make it equal the default rotation of the player hand. And then the fixed update network runs every fixed frame and updates the rotation of the player bone with the dummy bone. And when that rotation value is changed, then it triggers the rotation change function, turning on the on rotation change and sending it across the network. And with that, thank you very much for watching. I really hope this helps you understand how the VR synchronization was set up for my previous video. This is the first video of, my, of this type going through these sorts of instructions, so I welcome any feedback on how to do this better next time or what you found valuable. I look forward to seeing what you create with this new information. And if you like this, please like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.